Hello, this is Eduardo Suarez. Today I'm going to show you how to generate a random number and we're going to have some fun with a game. We're going to start by creating a new carrel program. We're going to go to Files, New File, Carrel Source, and I'm going to create a program that we want to call it Random Number. I took this program from the Carrel Reference Manual and what are we doing here? First, we're going to define some constant values that's called the increment, the modulus, and the multiplier. These values are going to be used in the algorithm for generating the random number. Then, we're going to declare some variables Maximum number is going to be the maximum number that can be generated. Seed is going to be the seed used for generating the random number. And random number is going to be the final result. You're going to see here that the uh, algorithm used for the random number is a pseudo random number. That means that it's not a real random number is going to be a sequence of numbers that have been generated based on an um, initial value that is called the seed. We're going to define a routine that I call random that takes as a um, parameter the seed and then it's going to return the seed again based on a um, algorithm predefined that takes the initial value to the seed and assign the result back to the seed. And then on the executed section of the program, I have defined the maximum number that can be generated. I am initializing the seed with an initial value of 259. And then I call the routine with the argument that's going to be the seed and then it's going to be multiplied by the maximum number it's going to create the absolute number of this one and it's going to run the number and finally it's going to give us the random number on the variable called random number we're going to save the program and we're going to build it Before we run this program, I want to show you in an Excel sheet, I have created 200 uh, random numbers. What I'm using in here is going to be the multiplier. That is going to be a constant value. I have the increment and I have the modulus. That's in here. I have the initial value for the seed. And then this is going to be the new seed that is generated on the executable section of the routine. And finally, the value that is returned from the routine is going to be here. We have the maximum number that's going to be 100. And then we have the absolute that is going to be the value that is created in here and finally it's going to be this value is going to be round and we're going to get the random number on this column and here finally we have the 200 random numbers that have been generated and i put everything together on a chart that shows how the uh, shows the sequence for each one of the random numbers. On the second chart, what I did, I plotted the numbers by the number of times that each number occurred. So you can see, for example, that some of the numbers have never occurred, like a number 3 and number 4. We have number 21 in here, 18, 32, and some other numbers have never occurred. 
but on the other hand, some of the numbers occur up to six times. If I can run the program, I need to initialize a seed, and we need to initialize a seed only one time. You're going to notice that I have declared the seed as in CMOS, meaning that the value is going to be retained to the memory. When we use instruction in CMOS, the variable is going to be allocated to the portion of memory called SRAM that is non-volatile. SRAM memory is also referred as CMOS of permanent memory. So we can cycle power the controller and the value of the variable is going to be retentive. We're going to open the teach pendant. We're going to select the random number program. And we're going to go to data, current variables. And you see that none of the variables have been initialized. So we're going to put this to zero. And now we can run the program. So we're going to select the program, shift, and forward. And now you're going to see, if we go back to the data, that um, the values have been initialized and we can compare this result to the result that we have on the Excel sheet. We're going to open the Excel sheet and you're going to see that the first result of the random, num random number is going to be 70. So now if we run the program again, it's going to be 53 and we can just keep running and you're going to see that the sequence is going to follow the number we have already identified here on, on the random number column. So you can see that even the result is random, the value is also deterministic because once uh, we know the seed, the result can be uh, predefined. To show you that the value is retentive, we're going to cycle power the controller. We're going to go to function and cycle power. We're going to say yes. And once the controller reboots, we're going to go back again to the query variables and see what values we have in there. It's rebooting. We can select the random number program. We're going to go to data. And this time you can see that the seed retain the value that we had before. Even that we don't have a random number, but next time that we run the program, it's going to use the seed, and the seed is the one that is going to generate the random number. Now we're going to create a new carry program. I'm going to call it star game. And here, what I'm doing is I'm going to declare some variables, status and program index. I'm going to declare a new routine called TP clear screen that inside on the executable section, I'm going to clear any data that we have on the user screen in the teach pendant. In the executable section of the program, I'm running an infinite loop 
with a repeat until instruction. And inside the loop, what I'm doing is I'm calling the routine to be clear screen. And I'm going to write some statements on the user screen in the teach pendant. You're going to see in a moment how they look like. And then I'm waiting for the functions key, a function a for shift and shift key function a file. And you're going to see here that on the on top of the program, I'm calling the translator directive include with this file. I've explained in another previous video how this uh, translator directive works. Basically, what is it doing when we create our first carried program? This file is auto generated and we can find this file if we go to tools we go to the folder for the work cell we go to robot and we go to support we're going to find this file that's going to be over here in this area we can open this file with a notepad editor and what you're going to see inside is that it's assigning the, um, all the keys from the teach pendant to a variables. In our case, I'm going to use the keys, the function keys a4 and a5 and we're going to use the shift plus function keys a4 and shift plus function keys a5 and you can use these variables inside the program once you have column using the uh, translator directive include so in our case if we go over here on the with instruction I'm going to be waiting for the user to press any of these two keys. In my case, because we're running RoboGuide, I cannot press F4 or F5, so that's why I'm using the Shift plus F4 or F5. If you're running this program in a real controller, you're not going to have this issue, and you can replace these two function keys with just F4 and F5. And we're going to run the program accordingly. So if we press the key, the shift key F4, we're going to call the program number. And we're going to, if we press the keys shift plus F5, we're going to abort the program. So we're going to save it and we're going to build it. Finally, we're going to create another carry program. We're going to call it guest number. And what this program is going to do is going to try to guess the random number that was generated. On the declaration section of the program, I have declared new variables. Your number is going to be the number that we're going to enter. Random number is the random number that is generated on the random number program. Number of tries will be the number of tries until we guess the number. And end game is going to be a flag that we're going to use to finish the program. We have also declared the routine TP clear screen from the start game program so we can use a routine in this program and on the executive section of the program I'm calling the random number program we're going to initialize the data I'm going to call the tp clear screen routine 
and then I'm going to run a loop with a repeat until instruction and inside the loop I'm going to write some statements on the user screen on the teach vendor. We're going to save this program and we're going to build it. I'm going to go back to the program and we're going to remove the comments that we have in here. We're going to use this instruction for monitoring and troubleshooting. We can delete this one later when we have the final program working. So now we're going to open the teach pendant. We're going to go to the, we're going to select the program, start game, and we're going to run it. Now we have this system in here. You want to start a new game, and you're going to see in the bottom that we have the yes and no that corresponds to the keys A4 and A5. And in here we have a description that says select the four yes or a file no when ready. So in my case, we am, when I am inside the Robo Guide and the shift key is already pressed, that's the reason that we need to use shift a4 or shift a5 when you're running the program on the rear controller, you're not gonna have this shift key press so you can replace this one with just a4 and a5. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press on the keyboard F4 to start a new program. And then we have in here this is the line that I removed the comments that is gonna tell you already the number that was generated is number 23 and it's gonna ask you now select a number between 1 and 100 and it's going to be waiting for the input of the measure value. So let's assume that I don't really know the number. We're going to press 50 and it's going to tell us that the number that we entered was 50 and the number is bigger than the random number. So we need to select a new number. We're going to go with the lower number, let's go to half, between 1 and 50 is going to be 25. And then the number is big again. We go with a half of that, that's going to be number 12. And in this case, the number is lower. And finally, we can write 23. And it's going to say congratulations, and it's going to tell us the number of tries that we try until we get the number. We have a um, wait of 20 seconds and then it's going to return to the initial screen where uh, it's asking again if you want to start a new game or not. If we don't want to start a new game, we just want to finish, we just press Shift F5. And the program is finished. I hope that you find this video interesting and I don't see any real application for this one, but just we're gonna have some fun.